Hey guys, welcome to my 2023 eyeshadow palette collection. Uh, this is just one part of my palette collection, but I'm going to go ahead and give a little intro here. So in total, including all of my mini palettes like quads, I currently own 40 eyeshadow palettes. So I'm going to show them all to you today. And I decided I'm going to go in alphabetical order by brand. So that's why we're starting with my ABH palettes here. And let's just get right on into it. So I have four Anastasia palettes here, as you can see, and these are actually some of my oldest palettes. First, we have Norvina. This has been one of my all-time favorite palettes for years now. I just love this color story so much. Last year, this was my Pan That palette, so you can see I have hit pan in a lot of the shades here. Really what I love about this palette is just the romantic ethereal color story of it the shimmers in here are that like super creamy almost thick kind of shimmer that abh is known for and i really like that because they give just a super smooth foiled effect on the eyes they are a little bit flaky so i usually make sure to just be careful as i apply them not to apply too much um, and a glitter primer underneath can help as well but i just i love this palette so much the pinks the uh rosy tones the golden tones. I just, there's so many different types of looks you can do with this. I have noticed as this palette has gotten older, I think the mattes, I've just noticed they have gotten a little bit more stiff and a little bit more patchy, whereas they didn't used to be. So it might be time for me to retire this palette soon, but I'm just not quite ready to part with it yet. Then we have Soft Glam, another classic. Okay, I'm actually going to move these out of the way so you can get a little bit more of a blank slate here. I've kind of gone back and forth on how I feel about this one. There've been times where I haven't reached for it as much. Every time the fall rolls around, I get back into this palette and lately I've been a lot more into uh, like just smoky brown eye looks whereas I didn't used to be so I have actually found myself getting more use out of this palette in like the last few months and yeah I just think this is such a classic even though it's been out for a long time I still think this color story is very relevant and very useful to me. Then we have the infamous subculture palette. This is another one that I've gone back and forth on. Right now I I don't know, I just haven't been feeling that inspired by this palette anymore. Some of the shades in here are very easy to work with and some of them are a little bit trickier. Most of like the deep mattes you have to be kind of careful with and they're not necessarily the most blendable. So that's one reason I don't reach into this palette more often. But also just lately, I don't know, I just haven't been feeling inspired by these colors whereas I used to think this was such an, an inspiring color story. But at the same time, Whenever I do sit down and take the time to play with this palette, most of the time I am really happy with the look that I get out of it, and there are a lot of just unique shades in here. And then the fourth and final Anastasia palette I have is Sultry. This one I've gotten a lot more into lately, especially like in December around the holidays. I was using this a ton. I love just all of the taupes and grays that you have down here on the bottom row. I like that it has this pop of coral too. It gives it a little bit of something to warm up your looks and makes it great for, you know, even the spring and summer. So I, I truly think this is a good palette for all year long. Next up, we have my Ace Boutte palette. So this is an indie brand I've recently been getting more into. All of these were sent to me in PR, but this is a brand that had been on my sort of wish list to try for a long time. So I've been having a lot of fun playing with these. So starting with the Aura palette, I'd have to say this one of the two is a little bit more up my alley. One thing to keep in mind with Ace Boutte is that their shadows are really meant for deep skin tones. So I'm not necessarily like the best person to be reviewing these shadows, you know, but this brand comes up with some of the coolest and most interesting color stories to me. This one has a really fun mix of pinks and berries and purples and even some green tones. And so you can go in a lot of different directions with this palette. You can do like more of a monochromatic look or you could pair, you know, the greens with the purples or with the pinks. I do find this palette a little bit tricky just because a lot of these are just shades that I don't use very often, especially these two like olive greens down here. I'm not always sure how to incorporate those into a look, but I do just like that this palette sort of pushes me out of my comfort zone. It gets me trying new color combinations. The shimmers in here are just incredible especially that purple there. I mean, you can tell that it's a duochrome in the pan, but once you have it on your skin, it has just even more dimension than you would expect. So that is the Aura palette. Then we have the Envy palette. This one, almost even more so than the Aura palette, the shimmers in here are just ridiculous. Like, this shade right here totally took me by surprise, this Rival shade. It looks really pretty in the pan, but look at how much more dimensional it looks on my finger here. Like, I mean, do you see that? That is so beautiful. Here's another one. That's the Phantasm shade. Just has such a beautiful, smooth sheen to it. And then this shade here, Vibes, 
is such a fun lime green and these are colors I don't wear very often but when I do I have so much fun with them so yeah really the shimmers in these palettes are what get me excited about them I did find this shade covet pretty difficult to work with kind of it would just sort of cling to one spot on my eye and it was kind of difficult to blend out it was kind of patchy so just keep that in mind with some of these deeper mattes the other thing with this one I kind of wish that this was just a nine pan with these nine shades here because I feel like these three are just kind of oddballs like I'm just not quite sure how to coordinate these three shades with the rest of the palette which is totally a me problem obviously like maybe I'm just not the color theory expert that I would need to be in order to know <laughs> what to do with those three shades but I do find it really fun and just very very vibrant very pigmented which is um just kind of how Ace, most of Ace Taste palettes seem to be next we have the flare palette this is such a fun one honestly i've only used this palette once and it was these four shades so i really haven't dipped into most of these colors so this one is really still in my like to be tested pile but i really just feel like this makes a good kind of one-stop shop for a lot of those really bold bright colors that you might want to play with so you know if i wanted to do like a turquoise liner i could just dip into this palette with one of those or if I wanted to do something really just bright green, I could use that shade. This palette is mostly matte, only has four shimmers. I definitely think this palette is going to be a lot of fun in the fall. I mean, a lot of the shades even have fall-like names like pumpkin, hazelnut, acorn, cider. And I like that you have this row of blues and greens then you have like these yellows and oranges and then up here you have like your purples and reds. So uh, I really just think this is going to make a great one-stop shop for any like bold color that I might want to tie into a look so maybe I'm you know working with another palette but I want to do like a turquoise liner I can dip into one of those or you know any color it just kind of offers a lot of colors that I don't have a lot of in my collection so I'm thinking this will end up being useful to me but like I said I've only used it once so far and then the last Ace Boutte palette I have is the floral vintage palette this is a really big palette this is the biggest one that I own I do think that they could have condensed this a little bit because I find it a little repetitive. There's just a lot of warm browns and oranges in here and you wouldn't necessarily know it by looking at it but this is a very orange leaning palette. Very very warm. I mean you can tell there's a lot of warm tones in it but a lot of the warm tones in here pull even more orange on the skin than they look in the pan like this shade right here surprised me so much the first time i used it because like look at how mustard that shade pulls on the skin like you would you would almost think that i just applied some of this buttercup shade you know like look at how look at how orange that is so that's just one thing to keep in mind with this if you don't like really warm orangey mustard tones on your eyes definitely skip this. But aside from that, I do really enjoy this color story. I like there's some pops of green, some pops of purple and berry. There's a lot of different directions you can go with this one, but it is primarily a very warm brown mustard sort of color story. Okay, the next brand on the list, we're still in the A's, is Aether Beauty. So let's start with this one. This one is no longer sold, so I won't spend too much time on it, but this is the Rose Quartz palette. This is the old version. They do sell an updated version. I've had this palette for a while, and I just love it for like a really soft, rosy look. Really, the mattes in here are what I love the most. They are just so unbelievably blendable, like more so than any other shadows that I own, honestly. Like these mattes are so easy to work with. And these four shades in the middle are really fun, especially this one. This is like a fiery coral duochrome. The thing with these shimmers is that you absolutely have to layer them over a glitter primer if you want them to like show up to their full potential, but they are so gorgeous when you do that, that to me it's totally worth it. I don't mind taking that extra step, but that shade, in particular is just so fun. And then the other two palettes I have from them are, I do believe are still sold. This is the Desert Sunset palette. I did a five looks one palette with this one when it first came out. I did end up really liking this one. I just like the kind of unique mix of peachy tones and olivey tones. And at first glance, this does the color story does kind of remind me of the Anastasia Sultry palette, but I actually think they're very different. Even though the shades are kind of similar, I I usually just get a much more like saturated, bright, warm look with this palette than I do with Sultry. These shimmers in the middle, I think you're going to have the best luck with them. 
used over a glitter primer. Like they do, they don't swatch great. They actually kind of remind me of Sigma's shimmers because they don't swatch well at all. But if you layer them over a glitter primer, they look so pretty. Like they're so twinkly and just like wet looking. So definitely wait for a sale, I would say, to get any Aether palettes because they are kind of overpriced on their own. But if you wait for a sale, I definitely recommend them. And this little guy I love so much. This is the Citrine Quad from Aether. And I just... I can't get enough of this quad. I used it again recently and I was just reminded of how much I love it. It's so simple and it's, it's, that's why I love it so much. It has one matte, um, just this nice medium warm brown and three shimmers. And the shimmers in here, I think are better than the shimmers in like Rose Quartz and Desert Sunset. They have that same glimmer that I love about the Aether shimmers, but they're a little bit more buttery and you don't have to use a glitter primer underneath. They work well even without a glitter primer. I just think it's a very well-rounded quad with the cooler taupe and the warmer shimmer and then this light shimmer that's, it doesn't look like anything that special, but it's super just like textured and gorgeous on the eyes. Like, I don't know, there's something special about this quad. If you want to just like try a small Aether palette, I would recommend this one. I think it's one of the best ones that they've done. All right, we have made it to the next letter of the alphabet. B. So here we have my BH Cosmetics palettes. BH Cosmetics, they are still around. I don't know if these palettes are still sold. I think you might be able to get them on like Beauty Bay or something. And Ulta still carries some, but not all of their travel palettes, at least last I checked. Um, so I don't really know. I feel like you just don't hear about BH Cosmetics as much anymore ever since they have been acquired by Makeup Revolution. But I don't know. I would like to see them make a comeback because I do love their eyeshadows. They make some of the best affordable eyeshadows in my opinion. This is the Lost in Los Angeles palette. Okay, I love the colors in here and I love the formula, of course, but I really don't like the layout of this palette. I just feel like it's so random. And I'm actually thinking about depotting this palette and rearranging it. Like possibly just rearranging it back into this palette or maybe just getting a separate magnetic palette to rearrange it in. I'm not sure, I'm a little nervous that I'm gonna ruin the shadows. So I'm gonna have to do some research on like the best ways to depot palettes like this, but that is what I plan to do because as it is right now, I just feel like I don't get a lot of use out of it. I mean, even just looking at it, like it doesn't look, look very used at all, but I really like this one for just a mix of pastels and mid-tone colors. Just a lot of colors in here that I don't have elsewhere in my collection. So it's a good palette to dip into just for those kind of shades that you want to supplement into a look. So I do like this one, but I'd have to say of the three, it's my least favorite just because of the color story. All three of these palettes to me have the same exact formula. So formula wise, I think they're all incredible, but this is the Mimosa palette. This is a ton of fun. It is mostly pink. I always say about this one, but I wish it had more oranges in it because Mimosa, I mean, mimosas are usually orange so i would love to see a few more oranges in here but either way i still love this color story it's a little repetitive with some of these hot pinks they could have maybe either condensed it or put in some different shades but i still have a ton of fun with this palette when i use it a lot of the looks that you're going to get are going to be very pink or coral um but i like that they included like an almost lilac pink here and a yellow and an orange so you can kind of branch off into those directions too yeah love this one <laughs> so much fun can't wait to use that especially in the summer another summer palette that i love is the summer in saint tropez this i think is still my favorite bh cosmetics palette to me this is just such a well-balanced palette it's colorful but still very approachable these first two rows especially are very easy colors to use and then in these bottom two rows you get some fun bright pops and i think another reason why i like it is because it's very heavily rosy leaning like as you can see the shade that i have pan on sand it's a great shade to start off any look but it does have like a rosy undertone to it there's also this light pink and then a lot of these shimmers are rosy as well there's a few more berry tones and pinks so i think that's one another reason why i really like it is because those are kind of like my comfort zone colors as it is so to me it just makes this palette feel a lot more approachable and wearable and i like that i can get something really simple with it or really bright and fun all right so then we have ColourPop. i actually only own two ColourPop palettes 
And they were both from this collection that I think came out like three years ago or something. I forget what the collection was called. There was a third one in this collection that I think was kind of green or something. But anyway, I have In a Trance and Miss Bliss. In a Trance was actually decluttered to me by a friend. I honestly, I don't think I would have purchased this myself. But now that I have it, I do really like it, especially just for like the periwinkles. And actually three of the colors in here, Crown Chakra, Mind's Eye, and Clarity are all actually like super shock shadows that's those three right there and actually those are the three shimmers it does have a pressed glitter which i don't use and then the rest are mattes and i actually really like the ColourPop mattes in both of these palettes they're just really blendable they're a little bit powdery but i don't really mind that and they do a great job with pastels i mean a lot of times pastels can just be very chalky and not have good color payoff but these pastels work really well for me so i I do really like this one. It's definitely not one of my most used palettes, but it's just kind of fun to have. And then Miss Bliss is more of a pink and peach sort of palette, which I love these colors in the spring and summer, just the warmer months. I just really get into warm, peachy, corally eye looks, and especially light peaches. I don't really usually wear like really bright pinks and corals, so I like that this has just, it's all very light colors. There's not a lot of depth in here, but a lot of the time, I don't want to go very deep with my eye looks, so I kind of like that. I'm excited to use this again soon because spring is right around the corner and that is when I really get the most use out of this palette. Another affordable brand is e.l.f. So I have two e.l.f. palettes. I have had more in the past, but these are the only two that I have currently. I have Earth and Ocean and the Cream and Sugar Quad. So Earth and Ocean, I adore. And to me, the formula of this one is better than their other 18 pan palettes. The other ones, they were just kind of okay to me, but this formula is a big improvement over those, in my opinion. Love the two opposing sides. You have the earth side, which has all of your earthy tones, some greens in it, and then the ocean side, which has a lot of blues and turquoises. Um, all the shades in here go on true to color. They're super easy to work with. If you were looking at the Ace Boutte Envy palette, thinking that you were interested, but maybe it seemed a little bit too rich and bold for you, the Earth and Ocean might be a good alternative that you can get at the drugstore. I mean, they're definitely different. And this one also has a lot of great neutral shades to anchor it, whereas this one really doesn't have much in the way of neutrals. And this one also has a lot of light mattes, whereas this one does not. So, I mean, they're very different, but they have a similar vibe. I think a lot of people would probably prefer Elf Earth and Ocean just because it is a little bit more, like, beginner-friendly, I would say. And then Cream and Sugar, this quad, this is one of their bite-sized quads. I've had two other shades of their bite-sized quads as well, Rose Water and Pumpkin Pie, I think it was. I actually decluttered both of those. Rose water I really liked, but it didn't age well at all. It kind of, it just expired quickly. The shadows just stopped performing well, and they also broke so easily. So far, none of these shades have broken, so that's good. This I actually got as a gift with purchase recently. I wouldn't have bought it myself because I was kind of over these bite-sized quads, to be honest. But I got it as a gift with purchase, and I thought, you know, I'll try it out, see, see what I think. And it's nice. Um, it has this very, I, my only critique of it really is that it just has one really light matte and one really dark matte. And I could have done without this really light cream color because I could just use my face powder and get the same effect. I just feel like this shade was kind of unnecessary. But I like that you have two shimmer options. This one's fine. It's just fine. If you use these colors all the time, this would make a good little everyday quad. But otherwise, if you have an extensive palette collection as it is, I don't think you need this. So next up in the alphabet we have Essence, and this is the only Essence palette that I own, the Coral Me Maybe palette. This is such a good mini palette. To me, these are way more worth it than the Elf Bite Size quads because you get six shades instead of four, but they still take up like a very small amount of space. And I just feel like the quality is a little bit better. I think my favorite shade is that one right there. That's this bottom corner shade. It's just a really interesting, it's kind of like a rosy bronze and just very different. I don't have many shades like that and it makes a great one and done shadow. The shimmers work beautifully. The mattes also are just super blendable. So I just think for the price, this little six pan palette is so good. I think these are like four dollars. The next brand I have is Estate and this is their Mystic Forest palette. I love this little palette. This brand doesn't get a whole lot of buzz 
on YouTube, but this little palette is so much fun and so underrated. I love it for the fall. I love this like warm mustard and olive vibe that this gives. The main thing that I love so much about this palette is this shimmer right here. I mean, I love the rest of it too, but this shimmer is what like makes the palette for me. It is like an olivey bronze almost, just very unique, very foiled. It has the texture of a ColourPop Super Shock shadow, same with this um, deep turquoise here. Yeah, there are those two shades. So usually when I use this palette, I use that shade on my lid and then I just use some combination of the other shades on the rest of my eye. This palette even makes like olive green fun for me. Normally olive green I don't love on myself, but just something about this palette and the colors that are in here and this olive green in particular, I do actually really like. Right, next we have Flower Beauty. I have two palettes of theirs. They're Desert Lights and they're Jungle Lights. So these are all shimmer palettes and they have this really creamy foiled formula. I mean, hello. Definitely a thicker formula. I mean, to me, these are kind of like a cream to powder. And you can see they're kind of flaky. A little goes a long way. You don't want to over apply these. Look at that. I mean, are you joking? It's so beautiful. One more, one more. Yes, I think Desert Lights is my favorite just because I... I love these kinds of shades, if you can't tell. I actually held off on buying this for a long time because I thought, just based on the pictures online, it kind of looked like these shades were really similar to each other. But now that I have it, I don't feel that way at all. Each shade is definitely different from the rest. I even like that they included this deep shade. I didn't think I was going to get very much use out of that one because I really like these palettes for like the light and medium shimmers. But that shade works so well as just, just to deepen up the look. So if you did want to only use this palette, you can get a lot of depth with that shade. So I actually find that shade very useful. These palettes are kind of pricey for a drugstore brand, but I think they're worth the price because they just have such a high-end effect. I mean, look at that. Unbelievable. And then Jungle Lights is a lot more colorful. I really like this one too. Same exact formula as Desert Lights. And I mean, yeah, you can just see for yourself. I love this corally red shade here. It's light enough that I feel like it doesn't feel like I'm putting like a really bold reddish coral on my eyes but at the same time it does make a statement for sure and then this shade down here I think is probably my favorite in the palette it's like a kind of purpley taupe oh my goodness I do feel like I look at this palette more as like a one shadow look type of palette like I'm not necessarily getting a complete look out of just this palette I mean I could but normally I don't normally I'm just dipping into like one or two of the shades and then I don't really use that deep purple at all. Um, there's what it looks like swatched. I don't like that it has like a black base. I actually really don't like that type of shade. So that shade I don't really use, so I do kind of feel like it's a little bit of a waste for me to have it in there, but I still love all, all five of the other shades so much that it's worth it for me to keep it. Next we have Hard Candy. I have five of their Mood Squads. These were actually sent to me in PR, and so far... Mm, I haven't actually used all of these yet. I haven't used these three. And then these two I have used, Bear and Purr. I like the color story of Bear better than the Elf Cream and Sugar one. They're kind of similar, but the difference is that Bear actually does have a mid-toned matte that I could actually use as a transition color, whereas this one it is, it's not dark enough to use as a crease shade. And then this lightest shade is a shimmer rather than a matte. So that's why I prefer the color story of that one. But the quality of this one is not great. The mattes, you really have to build them up, especially that dark brown. I mean, it looks pretty deep in the pan, but in the swatch, you can see it's just very sheer. And then the shimmer too. I mean, the shimmer is pretty. I just had to really layer it up, but you can see it there. And then that light pearly shimmer is just kind of meh. I just don't think the quality... Um, compares to like the Essence six pans or even the e.l.f. bite size quads, I don't think it's as good. Now, Purr, I do feel like has a slightly better quality. The deep matte in here works a little bit better than the deep matte in the Bare palette. I mean, it's still not great, but slightly more pigmented. Um, I do really like that light matte. And then this shimmer here is really pretty. It's very messy, but that is a really nice purpley taupe shade and then that lighter shimmer right there that's really pretty also i do think the quality of this one 
is a little bit better than Bear. And then these three, like I said, I haven't used. I think Buzz is really cute. I think this will be fun in the spring. Once again, that brown matte, it's just not very pigmented, but I really like that yellow shimmer there. And the yellow matte actually swatched surprisingly well also. So I think that one will be fun. And then Envy, the deep green is a little bit disappointing, but those other three lighter shades I think work really well. And the bright green matte swatched really well. I think the common theme with these hard candy quads is that the deep mattes don't seem to have good color payoff, um, but the rest of the shades are pretty nice. I'm excited. I think these will make good spring quads. And then Burn is this warm bronzy one. Okay, so there are the swatches for that one. This bronze shimmer, I pressed way too hard. I didn't realize how soft that one was. Um, and I got a lot of kick up. So that one you want to be careful with, but it has really nice color payoff. You can see there. I think these are fine. They're like $4 a piece. So if you see a color sword that you really like, I don't think they're bad. Okay. For the letter K, we have Kaja and I have this Beauty Bento little trio in Chocolate Dahlia. I really like this. I mean, these, these are very basic shades. And actually in the picture, pictures online, they look a lot more rosy, but these are not rosy at all. So there are those three shades swatched. Just a great everyday trio. These are, I mean, so many people wear these types of colors on an everyday basis. And I really like how just small this is. Very compact. So it's a great thing to just throw in your makeup bag. Yeah, the shimmer is stunning. And then the two mattes are super easy to work with, easy to blend. They do have good color payoff. You can see there. Um, so yeah, I like this little guy. Next, I have one palette from Clarity Cosmetics. This is the Somer Amazing palette. So here's this one. This is like a fully pastel palette. I love the shimmers in here. They are really what like makes this palette special for me, um, especially the shade. I was using this a ton last year. The shimmers are very flaky. That's the only thing to be aware of. That's kind of like the, the one flaw of Clarity's shimmers. But if you can get past that, they just give the most stunning, like, look at how twinkly that is. I, I yeah, I just can't get enough of that shade. It's so beautiful. Um, and all of the shades and all of the shimmers in here are that way. There's that one, the pink one, to this one. So pretty. You only need a little bit, a little goes a long way. And I enjoy the mattes in here too. You definitely want to wear them over like a white base because, you know, they're they're a little bit chalky. I mean, these are true pastels, but if true pastels are what you're looking for, I mean, these really are like actually pastel. There's that. Really fun palette. I especially love this one in the springtime and I cannot wait to use it soon. Next we have Lethal Cosmetics. I have one uh, just custom 12 pan from them and you can share a link to like the actual colors that you picked out. So I think I'll just link that below so you can see every shade that I used here. I also did a dedicated video on this palette with like, I think I did two looks and um, you know, went through the whole process of building it and everything. So if you want more info on all the shades. I'll link that. This was my first experience with Lethal Cosmetics and I love, my favorite thing about them is that they have these actual palettes that have individual spaces for each pan rather than just a big open Z palette. I just don't like the aesthetic of that, but I really like that this looks like a real palette that you bought, you know, like each shade has its own little slot to go in. My favorite shade I think is probably this one. This is the shade Genesis. It's a multi-chrome. And if you liked the look of those clarity shimmers, but you want something that's not so flaky, Lethal, I think would be a good brand to look into because their shimmers are a lot smoother. They're not that same kind of chunky, flaky sort of texture, uh, but they still give this beautiful twinkly shine. Look at that. Oh, goodness. Gorgeous. I also love this periwinkle shade. I love just putting that all over the lid. There's that. Um... Ooh, yeah, that's so pretty too. Um, I'll just swatch one more now. And then this is the other multi-chrome in here. This is the shade, I forget the name of that, but I'll pop it on the screen. All the shadows in here perform really well. Um, yeah, not a single dud in this whole palette. Another indie brand, next we have the Nomad Verona palette. This is their most recent launch. This is the only Nomad palette that I've tried. The shimmers in here are so nice. My most used one is this one, Morse. There's that shade. It has a transparent base. It shifts from like silver to gold, which I just think is so special. 
I love just using that as a topper, putting a little bit on like the center of my lower lash line. Sometimes I just reach into this palette for that shade alone. But all the shimmers in here are super shifty. There's that one. It's like a pink and blue duochrome. Here's one of the mattes. Look at that, so rich. I barely even tapped my finger in there. Even though they're very, very rich, they're so easy to work with. So I really like their formula, at least in this palette. That one I've been having a lot of fun with recently. Next palette is from a very affordable brand. This is the Profusion Mauves palette. Um, I've been using this a lot. I did put this into my project pan for February and I did just hit another pan. I actually hit it in a recent get ready with me, but I now have a second pan in here, a very tiny one but very excited about that. I've had this for a while. You can definitely see it's well loved. Um, a lot of the like writing is worn off on the front. This is a great monochromatic mauve and berry palette. These shadows are amazing quality for the price, especially the shimmers. Some of the mattes are a little bit sheer, but you can totally work with them. These two are probably the most sheer mattes. Those two. Um, but you know, this mat right here is like, very very vibrant but the shimmers are all so buttery and creamy and i just think for five dollars ten shades all very easy to work with that one <laughs> doing some really awkward swatches here but you get the idea um yeah i just i think this is a great palette if you like these colors and you just want a good staple rosy palette I definitely recommend it. Next for the letter Q, we do have one <laughs> little palette. This is from Quo, and this is clearly meant to be a dupe for the Kaja Beauty Bentos, but unlike the Kaja one, this is actually a quad. So you have four shades here, and this is the shade Snow Cone. I actually just used this yesterday, and I was really impressed. I thought they performed really well. Those bottom two shades right there uh, would just make a great, easy, cool-toned eye look. The only shade in here that gives me a little bit of trouble is the mint it's just pretty sheer there's the mint i built it up quite a bit you can see you can definitely get good effect with that shade um but i would say you probably if you want to get it to look really punchy on your eyes you'd probably need to layer that over a white base um, and then there's that fourth that top shimmer so really cute quad even just without the mint color included those three shades are very just uh, useful colors to me. I use those kinds of shades all the time. So I definitely wouldn't say the quality of this is as good as the Kaja one that I've tried, but for a lower price, if you're looking for something similar and you live in Canada or you can get Quo, um, I do think it's a nice, nice little quad. Next for the letter S, I have my Shared Planet Polar Bear palette. I really like this palette. I'm kind of sad to see this brand go. I don't think the formula of this is as good to me now as it was when I first tried it. I feel like now that I've tried more formulas, I don't feel like this formula is like anything to write home about, especially not the mattes, especially the deep mattes are very kind of stiff. I don't know. It's hard to describe, but you kind of have to like really work your brush in there. They work, but they're just, I don't know, the texture is kind of annoying to me. I do really like this matte though for a rosy crease shade. And then this shade here is so gorgeous. I mentioned before, I'm also considering depotting those two shades because those are really the only two shades that I've been keeping this palette for. Like, look at that blue shimmer. <laughs> I definitely want to keep that because that is something special. All right, we are nearing the end of the alphabet. Next, I have Sigma. So Enchanted I bought in 2021, I think. And then these two I recently received in PR, Ambiance and New Mod. Um, so we'll start with Enchanted since that's the first one that I tried. I love this color story. It's taken me some getting used to with the formula of Sigma. They are another one where I, I think I compared the Aether shimmers to theirs. They're kind of similar to Aether, kind of thin and not that impressive when you just swatch them on their own. Like they just swatch kind of underwhelmingly, especially this shade Metamorphosis, like, hello, where are you? There's like just not much happening there. So they don't look like much when you just swatch them like this, but if you layer them over a glitter primer, they are so twinkly and metallic and just super super pretty so if you're willing to take that extra step i do think these shimmers are really nice and then the mattes are like a little bit tricky to work with but now that i like the, the more i've used them the more i've gotten the hang of them and i don't mind them as much now you really just have to kind of pack them on and then not over blend because if you do they will become kind of patchy so you want to just pack them on and then kind of blend out the edges i think is what i've 
figured out. So anyway, not my favorite formula of all time, but it's also not a bad formula to me. I just love this color story so much. It's so pretty, especially for the spring, like with all the greens and pinks. I just think it's so pretty. So this one, I wasn't such a fan of it at first, but it has grown on me. It definitely has grown on me. Next, we have the Ambiance palette. And to my surprise, I am actually loving this palette. I, I do think I like the formula even a little bit better than Enchanted. The shimmers are a little bit better in this one. Like, I don't feel like you need a glitter primer with these shimmers. Yeah, like those shimmers to me are a lot punchier than the ones in Enchanted. And I like the mattes as well. I do kind of feel like the two dark browns are a little bit too similar. You know, maybe they could have switched it up a little bit and not put two virtually the same shade in there. But um, for just a go-to warm brown palette, I actually really like this one. And then we have New Mod. The shimmers in here are a little bit more like that one right there. That was artsy. That did not swatch very well. Same deal as with Enchanted. Without a glitter glue, they're a little bit hit or miss. I just love the variety of different shimmers you get in this one. You get like some more taupey ones, some more pinky berry ones. I also just like the kind of gradient of mattes. You know, you get a good range of deep mid-tones and then lighter shades. And yeah, I just think this is a very well-rounded, well-balanced color story. Both of these are relatively new to my collection, but I have really enjoyed them the few times that I've used them so far. And I can definitely see these being like some of my most used palettes long-term. Next we have Urban Decay. I actually only own two Urban Decay palettes. I have had more in the past, but these are the two that have survived all my declutters. So I have Stoned Vibes and Naked Sin. So we'll start with Stoned Vibes. This one was limited edition. It was limited edition holiday 2020, I think. So it's been a while, but if you've been here for a while, then you know how much I love this palette. I love how shimmer heavy this palette is. I love a either all shimmer or mostly shimmer palette. And that's really what this is focused around. I wish Urban Decay would do more like interesting textures like this because they really had something special with this one and they haven't really revisited this type of forma formula since. But they're very creamy, kind of kind of like ColourPop Super Shock shadows, like that kind of cushiony texture. Really nice. Like they're a little bit more translucent than something like the Flower Jungle Lights palette, but they give off a really pretty shimmer. A lot of duochromes in here. And I also like the four mattes too. I feel like they round the palette really nicely. Love this one. I always have fun with this when I use it. And then this is the mini Naked Sin palette that they launched last year, along with two other ones. They had a Foxy and a Half Baked, I think. This one, they were all based on one of the original Naked shades. This one, of course, was based around Sin, which it does have that shade in it. And this palette, I mean, you look at it and it's like, okay, that is so boring. And it really is. But it's also just, these are just my kind of colors for a everyday quick look. So I really like this one for travel or just when I don't want to think too much about my makeup, this palette is perfect. The formula also is really nothing that special, but at the same time, it's easy to work with, easy to use. I just know what to expect with it. So for that reason, for this type of color story, I, I kind of like that it's such an unremarkable formula because it's just, I just know what to expect. And of course this palette leans very light and this deepest shade is not very deep also. Like you can see there, it's more of a medium brown really. So if you want depth and you like to have like contrast in your palettes, you would definitely not want to get this one because it, it really is more of like a light to mid-tone palette. But for me, it's it's a good just like kind of staple palette to have on hand. And then last but not least, we have Wet n Wild. This is one of my newest palettes. This is their Call Me Sunshine palette. And this is my first Wet n Wild palette in years. I loved their eyeshadow formula a long time ago and I love their eyeshadow formula now. I really do think they make some of the best eyeshadows at the drugstore and I've said before like I feel like this absolutely rivals high-end shadows. This to me is a great alternative to like something like the Urban Decay Naked Honey. If you like, if you, if you're looking for a nice like warm, golden, honey sort of palette, I think this one is stunning. I like that it has more shimmers than mattes. You know me, I love my shimmers. Um, yeah, let me just swatch a few of these shades for you. So there are a few swatches there. Look at those shimmers, like these two middle shimmers. Whoa. Just goes to show you really do not have to spend a lot of money to get 
expensive looking eyeshadows. So that is my entire eyeshadow palette collection. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you had fun. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and hopefully I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.